When stones speak, what stories will they tell? I'm Raymond Craig in conversation with Dr. William Kelly, a specialist in 17th century Irish history. As we walk around the walls, we will unravel the stories that the stones will tell. Is it true that St. Augustine is the site of Colin Kill's monastery? Probably. I mean, Brian is his, uh, the, probably the foremost historian of the early city. He argues that, um, of course it is. But if you look at it, why would you build a monastery down a hill mm. when there's a hill there? And, you know, there's our evidence, I mean, from where the, the English soldiers mm. lodged themselves under Elizabeth. It was up there, that hill. Yeah. So it, it seems prob- probable that it was at St. Augustine's. Do you see the, the wall itself? What was it modelled on? Was there another one similar somewhere in Europe? The, the entire city is modelled on uh, Vitu Le Francois in France. And you can see the, the cruciform shape. It's like a Roman fort. It's modelled right. on a Roman fort. And uh, th- the same plans were then used for Philadelphia. It really would have been very difficult to attack this, this city, wouldn't it? But given the height of the walls and the hull along with it, leading down into the bog site where the cannon was far too heavy and always sunk, was the walls ever breached? The walls were never breached. They were never taken by a storm. That's why it's a maiden city. It's never been taken by a storm. Now, Sir Charles Coote captured the city in 1649 for the English Parliament, but he captured it by marching in. Not, he didn't have to fight for it. Yeah. Is it true that this gate is modelled on the Arc de Triomphe? Well, they are triumphal arches. Right. They commemorate the siege in 16 and the bo- and the siege in 1688, 89, and they're modelled on. They're not the original gates. Mm. They're triumphal arches. Triumphal arches. Uh, and Bishop Hervey, of course, would have been heavily involved in doing it. The model for that is Roman triumphal arches, as you can see by the iconography on them. And they were erected to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Great Siege. And you can see the sally gates. What exactly is a sally gate? A sally gate enables the defenders to sally out and and drive off any attackers who got too close to the wall. Mm. You have a famous incident during the Great Siege where the Governor Walker, later Bishop Walker, his pillar you saw a minute ago, he writes a history immediately after it. The history is basically his role as a hero in the siege mm. and uh, manages to leave everybody else, especially the Presbyterians, out of it. Mm. And I mean, at one stage in the history, it refers to the Presbyterian minister, Gilchrist, and spells his name K A L L. Right. See, Gilchrist. He says, I let out a sally with all speedy and secrecy and expedition. Right? They drive the Jacobites off, and that is a problem for them. The Jacobites had have got their cannon up there. Mm. But then the Reverend Mackenzie writes his history of the siege, where he said about Walker, he says, who's Church of Ireland, obviously. Yeah. And he says, it must have been with great secrecy and expedition. <laughs> Nobody knew about it. He says, I was there, and I didn't see him. This... St. Columns Cathedral was built in 16, or completed by 1633. Right. It's a tree is the first Reformed church to be built in Ireland after the Reformation, is that right? Cathedral. Cathedral. It's the first cathedral and built in Britain, actually, after, after the Reformation, right? And you can go, you can still see to this day, the promissory chalice from King James in 6th and 1st. The plaque inside it, why it's there. The plaque says, if stones could speak, mm. then London's praise would sound who built this church and city from the ground. Mm. So from that you get London Derry. The London companies were the people who built the city and the cathedral. The stonework in that cathedral was fantastic, isn't it? The stonework made up, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, there is some, there is some stories that some of the stonework was uh, taken from the remains of the monastery. Why would you, you know where you can prove that, mm. but why, in a sense, it's common sense. Why would you start building new wonder lights or producing them? But we don't know. You don't know that for certain. Mm. So there's a possibility that some of the stonework is from the original monastery of Colin Kill. And there is that religious continuity according to the Reformed Church. Right. You know, it would be lovely if that was the case. 
mm-hmm. because the Reformed Church say that they're the true church. They're the people who are true to Colin Kill. Their links with the rest of the world were formidable, weren't they? It was, Derry was a, uh, a cosmopolitan city at that time. Ships coming from all over the place. And Derry's a, Derry survival. The only reason Derry's here is the rubber and the port. Mm. It's the only reason it exists. And uh, I mean, it's like rivers elsewhere are, are the mowers of civilizations. Well, the mower of the cities, the river. And Derry's a very vibrant port at the time of the plantation in the 18th century. The emigration from here is a one story that's often told. And the first people to flee here are the Scots. But initially, that migration is across the Atlantic mm. to America. And I mean, if you look at the history of this city, and this is a very small place, but if you look at the Scots who left here, 21 American presidents are descended in those small numbers. You see the names of the streets, Artillery Street and London Street and Magazine Street. Is that sort of the street you used it for in the past or what? Uh, that's why they're called Artillery Street. It would have been a store for artillery. Magazine Street's a magazine. The Shambles, which is now Butcher Street. And if you look at the Shambles, you see why. Butcher Street runs down a hill. Mm. So all the blood could run out and the and awful could run out. The place has a reputation too for theatre and drama and music and... There's a lot of theatres in this city, isn't there? I know, and mm-hmm. there was traditionally a lot of theatres. You have to remember that that would have been the the foremost, there are no cinemas, that would have been the foremost um, form of form entertainment. Of entertainment. Yeah. And if you think of the playwrights from here, George Farquhar, for instance, mm. there is a long tradition here of, of uh, you can see it up on the, on the walls in the Verbal Arts Centre, which traces back that long tradition of literature and plays and poems and poetry written in this city, or about it. There's a lot of interesting architecture around the city though, isn't there? Now, you can still see the form of the city. It's, uh, it's still laid out in the same pattern it was, apart from a couple of breaches in the walls. Mm. And uh, I mean, there was a lot, in the 18th century, they wanted to knock them down because really? they were impeding the commerce of the city. We're walking down now towards Shipkey Gate, and I take it that's so-called because it was a key for ships. I mean, the names are self-explanatory, really. Mm. Shipkey, because the land that you see before it now, that's all reclaimed land. Mm. That was the ship key, where the ships pulled in. Right. That was the port. Derry Port. Derry Port's now been moved down to Alyssa Halley, but the port has always been central in that, the economic life of this city throughout the centuries. Because without that port, there was no point in having a city here. Do you see the cannons that are on the walls? Are they all original? They are. They are the, probably the, one of the best, if not the best, collection of uh, early modern cannon in Europe. And they arrived, I mean, over a period of time. Elizabeth sent cannon. James VI and I, the London Company same cannon. Some of the cannon are taken by the Lord Deputy Wentworth in the 1630s. They never get them back. God knows where they are, right? Mm. But the reason those cannon are there is this is the citadel for the plantation. This is your refuge. In the case of an Irish rebellion or any Irish rebellion, this is where you'll take refuge. And that's what happens. And we look at the stonework here too, it reflects the commerce of the city, doesn't it? You can see that the city is very successful commercially and economically at times, and at our times it's done its luck. These monumental heads were, are of course later additions to the walls. They celebrate the commerce of the city. Yeah. The trading with... So these are all the different continents. Their heads are Chinese and so on, and American Indians. Yeah. But there's also, I mean, the... the Sea God, there is Sea God, Man and McLear is there and all. Right. So they celebrate the mythology and the folklore of the city as well, and famous people associated with it. And Fantastic stonework, isn't it? Well, stonework's magnificent. I mean, most of the buildings in the city are built, were, all, were built to a very high standard. You know, originally, the housing would have been like a 17th century version of flat pack housing. 
Right. It was all brought over, like Ikea and erected on the site. I remember reading somewhere, as a result of the fire in London, they stopped building houses Wooden with house. timber. They stopped doing that. No, they, they, they had tried to do that even before the fire. All oh, right. Where you were wattle and daub was the way you built the house and wood. But they tried to persuade people gradually that they should build in brick. It's a great city to visit because not only do you have the walls, mm. you have a number of, of excellent museums. You have the Siege Museum, mm. you have the Colin Kill Centre, you have the Tower, Tower Museum. You were explaining to me about the, how the wall is not straight. Why is that? And Waterloo, Magazine Street, which parallels Waterloo Street. Yeah. I think it was Brian Lacey that pointed out that the wall chinks there. And the reason it does as that was the pilgrimage route for pilgrimage way for yeah. Colm Kill for the Saint. Yeah. And the English would not build on a pilgrimage route. Mm. Partly out of... Courtesy? No, mainly out of religious superstition. Yeah. I mean, there might have been a reformation in England. Superstition has not disappeared. Right. Or belief in it. If you remember the story about how the first English expedition was destroyed in 1566 on their Sir Edward Randolph, he was killed as soon as he arrived near it, Muff. The rest of the garrison were up in the black church when a wolf ran down from the oak forest that surrounded the city and threw a firebrand into a magazine. All right. And the English soldiers ran out shouting, the great Irish god, Colm Kill, has killed us all. That's according to the Irish. Right. According to the English, it was accidental. It's probably a, an early example of the dangers of smoking. Somebody probably knocked a pipe. <laughs> Out on the barrel, of it. but it blew up uh. the magazine and killed the English withdrawal. This section of the wall here overlooks the bog side, and that's so named because it actually was a bog, isn't that right? Uh, beside it, beside the bog. Yeah. There was a small stream ran down there, and it's uh, the Mary Blues Burn. And if you read Sir Henry Dockrell's report when he arrives, he was the first man to say. He, said he, he says the city lies in the form of a bow bent. Yeah. And the, a later report says a fat, town, a fat town for war and merchandise. Mm. This section of the wall here, was, was it originally called a catwalk or a fashion parade or a where the ladies would have a walked on a Sunday? Now, we couldn't stand over this, but that's um. apparently where the young ladies would promenade up and down. Yes. And it became known as the catwalk. And now, when models walk down, they walk down the catwalk. So this is the original catwalk? This is the original catwalk. The trees here commemorate the apprentice boys. Is that 13 who, trees? Hey, who slammed the gates of the city mm. in front of the Air of Argyle's regiment, who mm. were about to occupy the city and uh, committed treason. Right. But which gives you an insight into what's happening in the city. There's a big, there's a, a class war happening in some ways. Whereas the lower orders, as it would have been called, or the rich would refer to him as a many headed monster, was taken over. Because yeah. anybody who was rich enough got out of the place. There's a lot to see in there besides the walls, isn't there? I mean, this is a market that mm -hmm. has all kinds of things in it. It really is fascinating. I mean, the walls are now being used as a, I think it was. The famous Paddy Bogside mm. said that the walls can for, be for Derry a noose or a necklace. And I think they're most definitely a necklace. Mm. They, and they're and they're, they used to promote our tourist attractions in the city. And there's a vibrancy in the, in the inner city now. Yeah. And, which is great to see. I've on the walls at any time of the week or any day of the week. You'll find visitors from Japan, America, Italy, Germany, all over the place. Fantastic. Clearly when stones speak, they have an awful lot to say. And when we listen carefully, we discover the stories that can be told. Visitors really should come and enjoy the whole ambience of the place. Thank you very much, Billy, for your interpretation.